So today we come back up here to the Ibex mine. We came up here a few weeks ago and the footage was so bad I decided not to use any of it. And so we made a little trip back up here today to look around. The shot you saw coming in, uh, that's the lowest tunnel and we'll go back and visit that in just a little bit. Right behind me, there's a shaft, a 300 foot deep shaft and it's still open. So if you come up here messing around, be careful. There's no fence up or anything around this. It's right behind all this wood here and it's would be pretty easy to stumble off into that thing. So if you come up in this area, be careful of this thing. It's uh, open. And from my understanding, there's another open one right down below us here, um, a couple hundred feet down the hill. This vein that they were following, which this shaft sinks down on, uh, stretches over this mountainside down into the Bald Mountain Mine. This mine itself did not have a mill on it from what I understand. They hauled all the ore over the hill to the Bald Mountain Mine and milled it there. But this vein is very clearly seen, and we'll go look at it here in just a minute, over this hill. It's a pretty wide quartz vein. Um, in places, they say it was up to 8 to 12 feet wide. Uh, and it's in, a, like most of the mines around here, Argolite. And the whole surrounding area around this on almost every side is granite. And then there's this little island of Argolite out here, and that's where this mine is located. And some of the reports indicate that this might be the very end of the Columbia E&E vein. There's not many mines in between here and there. There's a few, the Bald Mountain Mine and a couple smaller mines. But um, some of the reports indicate that this is probably the far end of that same vein structure. So let's go look at uh, this vertical shaft, then we'll go down and look at some of the other levels there's not a lot to see here besides a shaft, and we'll take the drone up and look straight down into this. We've already dropped some rocks down in there. It sounds like it's open uh, for quite a ways, maybe still 300 feet down. And so we'll look at this, and then we'll go look at the other levels. As you can see, there's no fence around this, just an open hole. It looks like there used to be a fence at one time right there, but it's long since gone. I don't really like coming up to real close to these collars on these shafts, but we'll get as close as we can, then we'll take the drone over the top. You're seeing probably more than I've seen. I'm holding that camera out just as far as I can get it. But uh, all the reports indicate that this mine was in extremely hard argolite. Uh, a lot of this argolite in this country is very fractured and so it breaks up pretty easy but evidently this mine uh, it's very hard uh, two or three different reports indicate that they uh, had a little trouble digging through this especially in the early days i think this mine was found around um, 1880 1890 and so they were probably using black powder back then instead of dynamite so we're up above the shaft here's the quartz vein and it goes quite a ways up through here. Last time we were up here, I walked up there a ways and it's clearly visible for at least a couple hundred yards up there. And you can see it's intermixed, kind of brecciated with the, uh, the country rock. And here's a view from the upper side of this shaft. And this vein it dips at about, if I remember the report, about 85 degrees or so. So it's nearly a vertical vein through here. The rest of the uh, workings are down below here. Kind of through the trees there, you can see some of the buildings on the next level down. And somewhere out here, there's a raise that I read about. I'm going to wander out there and see if I can find it. And raises can be particularly dangerous because a lot of times there's no tailing pile uh, around them like here you know obviously there's a workings here because you can see this uh, waste rock pile raises sometimes they come up from underneath and you have no indication that it's there so we'll wander around it's supposed to be right down in here we'll go see if we can find it and real close by here there is a geocache too so if you're into geocaching there's a geocache right next to this this mine just be careful if you come looking for it one last look at this this vein they were following. Now right on the other side of the hill, I'll show you a quick shot of 
a mine I walked down to is below the road. Um, this mine, there's a lot of fresh air coming out of it. I don't know if it connects into this mine or not. All the, it's on the Bald Mountain side. So I don't know if it's connected into the lower workings of the Bald Mountain mine or it's connected to this mine, but uh, it's kind of an interesting tunnel. It's uh, very well built. The, the, uh, the portal's nice and sturdy. It's obviously big enough to take equipment into. So it's, uh, it's a nice looking mine, but there is a keep out sign. So I decided to stay out of it. From what I read, these two mines, the Bald Mountain mine and this one, at least the last report I could find, which was I think in 40 or 41, the two mines are still not connected, even though they were within just a couple hundred feet of each other at one point. The lower level of the Bald Mountain was evidently somewhat lower. I can't remember how many feet, like three, 400 feet lower than the lowest level of this mine. But that's, right there's the hoist house. That's what all that big timbering is, is the hoist house. Let's take a quick drone shot of this and see if we can see any further down that, uh, that shaft. So after flying the drone around, we think, I've got my two video producers here with me, we think we spotted this uh, other vertical down here. According to some of the documents, it's a, a raise, but I do see some tailings down here. So we're gonna go down here and investigate and see if we can find them or find it. Well, it didn't walk very far. I've already found what looks to be a nice flat spot down here. I do remember this level here is only like 60 feet lower than the tunnel or the shaft. And that would be about what this is. It looks like there might have been a tunnel right there at one time. Look at that I found it. Let me hold it up. Pretty interesting. This definitely looks like it was probably tailings from a tunnel right there. So I don't think this was actually the rays. What is that? It's an insulator. Pick up. It's pretty cool. Looks like some of the ore they were after. And all these piles up here smell like sulfur. So I don't see the rays that come out to the surface up here. There's supposedly a rays that came up from the next level down, which is down in here, probably 100 feet lower than we are now. Supposedly there's a rays that comes up somewhere out here, but I don't see it. It came up to the surface. I'm not going to go wandering around out there looking for it, because those can be, like I said before, pretty dangerous because you can just walk across the hole and if there's brush or limbs across it, you know, it's pretty easy just to stumble across it, especially if they didn't leave a very big opening there. So we'll just kind of leave that one alone. But this was evidently what they called level two, because there was four levels to this mine. So this would have been level two. 
We'll go down here to level three, which I think we can get underground a little bit on that one. Well, during editing, I went back and read that mine report again and found out some of what I'm about to say in the video is a little bit off and some of what I just said is a little bit off. This level we're currently standing at, uh, that you just saw us standing at with the little tailing pile, that's actually level one. Uh, the shaft sank down 20, I think 27 feet to that first level uh, and then they drifted on it and it uh, surfaced out. I'm not sure whether they sank the shaft first or dug this uh, added in first, but either way, that's level one. What I refer to as level three uh, is actually level two. And it's about roughly, uh, I don't remember exactly what it said, close to 100 feet lower than the top of the shaft. Level three uh, is actually the only where it surfaces is up to the shaft. There's no uh, adit coming out anywhere on the side of the hill or, or tunnel uh, to daylight that shaft. That one was strictly accessible from the shaft. And level four, which we'll get into in a little bit, is quite a bit further down the hill. Um, at first I was kind of confused when I was up there doing the video. It did, just didn't really make sense in my head the, the different levels that I was talking about. And I just kind of skimmed through the report when before we went up there. I didn't really read it in depth. I come back and actually read completely through it. And so what I'm about to refer to as level three is actually level two. Level three doesn't surface besides up out of that shaft. So just to clarify what I'm about to say, just forget these level numbers here on these first on this first ad that we're about to go to. That's actually level three. No, two. See, I'm still confused. Okay, so let's look at these different levels here real quick. Level one, which is where we were just standing, kind of goes in at about an angle like this. We'll just save that real quick. We'll make it a different color. Do green. Make it a little bigger. So that's essentially level one. And it evidently crosses right here either on the side or right through the shaft, I'm not sure. So level two is a little bit different. It comes in here about like this. And we'll just save that. Give it an orange color. Make it bigger. But it also extends out. Now you got to remember this is uh, underground. This extends out Quite a ways over here, move this end up like that. It might be a little exaggerated, but I don't think it goes quite that far up here. Probably something about like that. So that's level two. It went in, and you know, obviously, these are kind of stacked on top of each other underneath the ground. So this one's about a hundred feet lower roughly than the the shaft opening it goes in here and connects in and in a second you'll see where this day lights out right about there or right here one of the two we'll see that in just a second now if we go back out and level three uh we'll throw it on here real quick is somewhere you know down in the mountainside like this obviously lower another about another hundred feet lower than this or a little more and it, this vein is standing on edge you know it's almost 90 degrees so somewhere down in here is level three we'll just throw it in there and that only daylights out through the shaft right there So that shaft goes down, connects to level three. It also connects to level two down in there. Now this this isn't quite right. If you could, if I could do this in three day D, it would make a lot more sense. And level four is down here. And this one is a pretty long tunnel, and we'll explain that in just a little bit. It goes clear back. Grab this. About right there almost underneath that shaft and that's where it kind of meets up with the vein I, yeah 
from what I understand, this is mainly a cross-cut tunnel back to the vein. It may be on part of the vein. I'm not 100% sure. And you'll see why here in a little bit. But level 4 starts way down here and connects into the vein. Now, it does have one raise that comes up and connects into level 3. Uh, here, just so this makes more sense, we'll put it like this. Because this vein is standing on edge. Uh, so somewhere in here, right in this area here, there is a raise that comes up and connects into level three. It um, that's the only place that I could tell from the old records it connects. Now, with that said, this has been mined more recently in like the 1980s, and so what those guys did uh, during that mining period, I'm not 100% sure. They may have extended this quite a bit out. They may have connected these levels in different spots. I'm not 100% sure. There's I can't find any history of what was done in the 80s. But uh, let's jump back in to where we were before. Excuse the footage. I'm just using my phone, but we drove up the road just a little ways from that shaft and we finally found this raise right next to the road. And what they say is a raise, I think is more of a uh, probably a stope that they accidentally punched out to the surface. If you look down in there, you can see that. I think this was the rays they were talking about in that documentation. I'm trying to work around the other side and get a shot of that. It used to have a fence around it. Really not getting any better angle on this. Here we go. Now this may play a part in what we'll see in a minute. And I'll show you down below, but there's a massive amount of air flowing from down at this next level, which would have been level three. Yeah, it's so tempting to climb down in there and go take a look, but we'll go into this next level down here a little bit if it looks safe and see if we can get up in there a little bit. So we're down here at level three. See some buildings here. These buildings are not original to the mine. They're not the old buildings. These were probably put in, I'm guessing in the 1980s. From the looks of things, a uh, company come in in the 80s and did some work here and opened these tunnels back up and made them significantly bigger probably than they originally were. You can see here the tailing pile or the waste rock pile for this this level. And I am not sure how much of this was from the other company that come in later in the 80s and how much of this is original. I'm assuming most of it was original. But oh boy, does this have a strong sulfur smell to it. See the mine entrance up here? And it appears to be locked, but I'll show you there is access to it. Let's go take a quick gander at this. See if it looks safe enough to go in or not. One thing that amazed me last time we were here is right about here you can start feeling the cold air. And this is some of the coldest air I've ever seen come out of a mine. It's almost like a uh, air conditioner blowing on you. You can see the size of the timbering they used. They probably used propane powered machinery in here, I'm guessing, maybe diesel powered. see this even though they said that this uh, arg light up here was really hard you can tell this area right here is extremely fractured these things areas like this make me somewhat nervous this over here appears to be nice and solid let's go down in here and take a peek I think it's just this portal area that's where this walk rock has been weathered is the main issue so it collapsed right behind where they cribbed it 
And boy, is the air cold coming out of here. Uh, I was hoping to put on waders and get back in here. But I think this is deeper than what I thought. Okay, so this is definitely going to be over the waders I brought. But I'm betting that water is ice cold water and the wind coming in from that upper level, the shaft blowing through here is why that's so cold coming out of there. Go down here and take a little better peek. Probably that sure be fun to go explore. If you had uh, maybe chest waders, considering I know from the looks of things they brought equipment in here, there's only about, I don't know, three feet of space down there, and so that's probably about five foot deep water. But I just really wanted to get back there and explore that too. You can see right there where the light's shining, that's one of the, uh, the bolts they ran up probably had a screen all the way through here so the screen's probably down in that water now i see some of it hanging from the ceiling back here so this isn't super stable and this is not going back on a vein this was a cross cut there's no vein material here at all so this probably goes back to about where that that raise was that we looked at, or that uh, collapsed stope. I'm assuming that's probably about where that wound up. And then went out on the vein from there. Pretty interesting, it's pretty stinky. It smells a lot like sulfur. Man, that's a bummer. When I was up here the other day, or a few weeks ago, you know, from up, I just peeked in from above. I assume there might've been a foot of water in here, but this, yeah, there's way too much water to go back in there. Well, interesting nonetheless. Let's go look at something else then. And see up out of the hole here. I think this level, from the documentation I could find, this uh, crosscut went back in about 300 feet and then they drifted about 600 feet on the vein. The next level down here, level four, goes back in about 2,300 feet. Now that was based on uh, the report from like 1940. That same company that was in here working during the 80s evidently did work down there. And I've tried to figure out which company that was. And without going back and digging through a whole bunch of newspaper articles, I really couldn't dig up what company that was. But they did a lot of work down here on this uh, fourth level too. So how far that mine actually goes back in there, that tunnel goes back in there, I'm not sure. Because the it's not available anywhere I could find so originally in 1940 it was 2300 feet and where the other company wound up at i'm not sure i don't know if they actually tied it into the bald mountain mine eventually or what but they did do quite a bit of work uh, from the looks of the opening down here so we'll wander around here real quick take a look at these buildings one more time and then head down to level four i'm pretty sure this was the generator room Might have had the air compressor in here too, I'm not sure. Just from what it looks like there with all the electrical panels, I assume the generator was in here and they had a ground rod driven right there. So here we are at the fourth level of the Ibex. And this thing goes back in about 2,300 feet, according to the records. Now how much of that is cross cut and how much is actually working uh, drift tunnel I'm not sure because it from what I can tell here I don't really see any indication of the vein right here so I'm pretty sure this was a cross cut back into the vein when I first saw this I was pretty excited to see this culvert in here because usually when you have these, this will stay uh, open uh, for a long, long time. Really good way to uh, shore up these portals like this. 
But as soon as they stop with the culvert back here, we'll see what happens here. Because again, this would be a really fun one to go explore, especially being 2,300 feet straight back. But as soon as they reach the timbering part, it's collapsed. And it was timbered heavy. And this stuff, this iron down here on the ground with water, this might be iron sulfate. This stuff is, the more you step back in here, that's already, what, 10 inches or so deep? So, I imagine back in this uh, back part, it's really deep. So unfortunately, back here where the wood starts, you can see where it rotted and just collapsed. Again, I think this is probably from the 80s. If you could open that up, I bet there would be millions of gallons of water that come out of this thing. If somebody has any knowledge of when this was mined, uh, when they opened this back up, uh, again, I think it was in the 80s sometime, let me know. I, I'd be really curious to find out when that was. Well, that's going to about wrap up the Ibex mine. Uh, like I said before, this has a lot more workings in it than I, what I thought it had. Originally, when I looked up the Ibex many years ago, I thought it was just one small 300-foot shaft. I did not realize that there was all this other workings to it until we went on the ride here a few weeks ago. Then I did a little more research into this mine and found all these other workings. It's too bad we can't get back in here, especially this level here at the the fourth level, uh, that'd be a lot of workings to go explore, but uh, with it collapse like that, you know, it is what it is. You could go back in there and dig that out and probably get flooded out, but who would want to do that? The other thing I want to stress is that rays that we looked at up above, those things are extremely dangerous. Uh, usually there's no tailing pile around them or a stope that comes up to the surface. Uh, around these old mines, you got to be really careful, especially if they did a lot of stoping, and a lot of these guys especially when they come in and did secondary work uh, trying to clean out what the original miners left there was uh, they would go clear up to the root level with their stope so you could be walking around and suddenly find yourself into a stope so if you come explore these old mines be really really careful uh, those openings like that can just creep up on you and all of a sudden you're down in a hole so as always thanks for watching we'll see you guys on the next video